Welcome to the GCN Tech Show. This week we have Fires, Sagan's aluminium bike, loads of exciting new tech from the Tour Down Under, as well as your upgrades and the Bike Vault. Nice, better get going. Come on then, Ollie, tell us what's hot in tech this week. Well, e-bikes are pretty hot, Chris, but not as hot as this one, which caught fire whilst it was being ridden up Corkscrew Hill in Australia. That looks nasty. Yeah, Gary Ryan, 79, suffered burns when his bike burst into flames while he was riding it. Yeah, not only that, the heat of the fire went on to set off all of his CO2 canisters as well, like a little firework display. We should note, though, that it was an aftermarket e-bike motor, not a standard e-bike itself. So yeah. based on this, I'm not sure I'd use one. Yeah, it was retrofitted, wasn't it? Yeah, maybe it was a brush fire. Maybe. Ooh. Ollie, I want to know more about Peter Sagan's aluminium bike. Yeah, check this out. It looks absolutely awesome. I think we're actually going to have a video of it on the tech channel that John's managed to shoot while he was out there. Um, but it could be described as well. A very clever marketing ploy by Specialized, if you were being cynical about it, because Peter Sagan took to the start line of the Down Under Classic Criterium, not on his normal carbon fibre S-Works, but a aluminium Alley sprint frame. I am cynical, but I think it's genius. And I think it's really cool because he actually yeah. went on to finish second just behind Caleb Ewan. Mm. But it does beg the question, would he have won on his carbon bike? Or do you not even need carbon bikes to be competitive? Yeah, well, I guess you can look at it either way. But yeah, I agree. It's really cool. It's a nice looking bike. Yeah, it is a nice looking bike. And it's quite cool to see different materials back in the peloton. I sense an accent coming on, Ollie. Tell us about the next bit. Well, it's been a bonzer tick fist down under. John has spotted some new refer shoes. He did? Sorry, I've just offended an entire nation. But uh, yeah, John spotted some new Rafa shoes of a lace-up design. They're unreleased, uh, quite similar to the Giro Empires, but they have a little Velcro strap on the front just above the toes. Nice. These white shoes were spotted on the feet of Lachlan Morton of EF Education First. Yeah. Also seen down under is a new helmet from Laser, the Bullet 2.0, which is claimed to be nine seconds faster than the Laser Z1. Crikey, Ollie. That is a bold claim. So the helmet is a further development of the previous version of the laser bullet, and it maintains that vent on the top, that sliding vent you can open and close. To get those bold claims, though, you're going to have to use the Zeiss visor. Yeah, laser have made some curiously specific claims about the new bullet 2.0. You can save 7 watts over the laser Z1, but to do that, you have to ride at 58.68 kilometers per hour while wearing the visor and with the vents closed. Yeah, it's quite specific, 36.44 miles an hour. Yeah. The only time I do that is going downhill, and if you can save me seven watts when I'm freewheeling, I'll be quite happy. Yeah, well, if, if you can do it for a whole kilometre, you'll save nine seconds. Hmm. So. Expect to see these on the Sunweb riders this season. I would imagine you'll only see them in the flat, fast races, though. But that's not all in the world of helmets, Ollie. A new POC has been spotted at the Tour Down Under on the heads of the EF Education riders again. The new Ventral, which claims to have better ventilation and a lower weight. Yeah, it's got features borrowed from the previous POC, Octal and Ventral aero helmet um, and sort of combines both. And in a size medium, it's said to weigh just 230 grams, which is pretty competitive. Yeah, you wouldn't even know it's on there. It is January and following a massive overindulgence at Christmas, the gyms are packed and many of us are looking to get back into shape. Heart rate monitors and fitness trackers are all the rage. But the question is, Ollie, do we need tech to help us lose weight and get fitter? Well, some cool tech was just reported, actually. Um, researchers at Purdue University, in collaboration with the University of Texas and uh, the Idaho National Laboratory, reported on Tellarium nanowires, which display a high piezoelectric response. Now, Tellarium is a rare earth metal, and it's in the same group as sulfur and selenium in the periodic table. And it displays, well, piezoelectric sensitivity due to its unique kind of structure. And a piezoelectric uh, effect is a polarized electrostatic response to um, mechanical stress. So basically, if it moves or bends, it could create an electric signal. Yeah, that's right. right. 
Well, the researchers used these Tellarium nanowires to make a wearable heart rate monitor, and they were really impressed by the sensitivity that it displayed. So in the future, this could be used to make heart rate monitors that are built in to clothing, and also it could be applied to things like power meters to make them more sensitive and more accurate than before if, there was, if it was used in strain gauge technology. Ollie, this is all well and good, but do we need tech and gadgets to actually help us get fitter and lose weight? Well, in 2014, a controlled study was conducted over 800 subjects. The results were published in the Lancet of Diabetes and Endocrinology. And the results found that after a year of wearing a clip-on activity tracker, the subjects noticed no effect on their health and fitness. A second study in the Journal of the American Medical Association, which I, I know is one of your favourites. Top 15. <laughs> showed that subjects without fitness trackers lost more weight than their gadget wearing counterparts, on average eight pounds more. Oh, and that's a lot. Yeah, and crucially, um, it also showed that when you were using a fitness tracker, the people that did that were no more fit or healthy than those without. An important disclaimer, though, is that since these studies were conducted, the technology in these gadgets has advanced quite quickly, hasn't it? They've yeah. become much more engaging to the point that I think that tech and gadgets like these actually can help us get fitter. Yeah, more accurate too. Yeah. Power meters can be used to measure energy expenditure as kilojoules can be converted into calories. But this isn't totally accurate because it does rely on an estimation of the efficiency of the human body. And the human body isn't 100% efficient. And typically you can expect to have a plus or minus 5% accuracy of the calculation. Another tool you can use is a heart rate monitor. These are great, but essentially they do estimate your energy expenditure. And they're not as accurate as power meters, are they? They're plus or minus 20%, which is it's close, but it's not great. Yeah. Some apps, though, simply estimate what you're doing based on your time and your distance. Yeah. And whilst it's an idea, they can be way off the mark. So I don't really recommend using those. Yeah. So apart from potentially overestimating calorie expenditure, you know, why else might fitness gadgets be hampering uh, weight loss and people trying to get fitter? Well, there is increasing evidence that after using a fitness tracking app or something like that, people are then so aware of the calories they've used that they're overcompensating, essentially. So they'll eat more or they'll sit down for longer. They'll effectively do less between their workouts than they perhaps would have done otherwise, which kind of negates doing the effort in the first place. These compensatory behaviours can very easily offset the work done and the calorie expenditure from exercise. And in 2009, a study actually showed that people subconsciously ate more post-exercise. You know what all these apps are great for though, is motivation. I really find personally that if I've got a target to work towards, whether it's a really good accurate target or just something that my watch throws up for me, it really helps me motivate myself. Yeah, and I've really been impressed by how indoor training has improved. I used to hate doing indoor training, right? Like, I, it was torture for me and I would do it, avoid it at all costs. But now that turbo trainers have become much better, they feel much more realistic. You know, you can have fans set up and interactive experiences, whether it's it's a, an app or some kind of you know video of you riding up a mountain or something. I find it much easier to motivate myself and do workouts indoors, whereas before I just never did. And techs help me get fitter outside because I still detest riding indoors, but fortunately clothing has improved so much in the 22 years that I've been riding a bike that it's now much more bearable to be outside, even on the worst of days. Yeah, waterproof jackets now are just like so much better. Yeah. <laughs> you, you, you actually get home being able to use your fingers now. Yeah. Whereas before, you might as well have had these big claws on the end of your arms. Useless trying to get a key in a, in a Yale lock. And if, like me, you still detest riding indoors, well, then fortunately, tech has gotten a lot better in our clothing, so you can spend longer outside, even when the weather isn't that great. Yeah, which, I mean, that's pretty rare yeah. in the UK. Look at these tans. We have an amazing climate. I mean, just, I don't want to brag to you, to you guys, but we're pretty lucky. Anyway, I think the evidence is, is clear that there are you know, undoubtedly huge benefits to doing exercise, but it's that classic thing of, you know, combine exercise with a good diet, and, you know, that's, that's the key, but make yep. tech work for you and nice. not kind of just rely on tech to be the solution. So we want to know, how do you use your tech? Drop it down in the comments box below. Yeah, do you think tech is a useful tool to, uh, to help you lose weight or get fit? More tech now. 
I'm a big fan of aero socks. They can provide a measurable reduction to your aerodynamic drag. But it, well, the UCI isn't a fan, and they introduced a new rule this year limiting sock height. But fortunately, a small company called Rule 28 have responded to this by making UCI legal socks slash overshoes that have just come out. Slash leg warmers, Ollie, if you look mm. at the originals. Not a fan. Too long. Too long? Yeah. I thought you liked long socks. No. If it covers the bulge of my calf, then it's too long. I'm glad you said of your calf on the end of that. It's now time for screw riding upgrades by upgrades, where you submit before and after pictures or videos of your bikes and equipment for a chance to win the ultimate prize, the GCN Capron. Such an ultimate prize, it's so incredibly rare. Look, I haven't seen it today. Yeah, Suggestion Boy ran off with it, but we'll get it back off him. Last week, it was Robert versus Joseph, Colorado versus Cleethorpes. Impossibly the first ever head-to-head -head between the two towns. Yeah. You would imagine, anyway. <laughs> so, what was it? Robert uh, Specialised? Yeah. Or Joe's Retro Reboot? Man, it was close, right? But the winner is Robert from Colorado. Uh, nice. With his, with his specialised 52 to 48%. That's yeah, close, isn't it? That is very close. Yeah. Well done, Cape Runs in the post. Right, this week. We have we Andrew with a Chameleon Blue Cannondale 1998 R1000 CAD 3. State College, Pennsylvania. Andrew bought the bike for $80 off of Craigslist with a mishmash of parts, Shimano RSX derailleurs, and a wheel set with a goofy headset and two different shifters. The entire group set was upgraded to SRAM Apex and SRAM Red Cranks. A Cane Creek headset replaced the aged threaded headset along with an Eastern Aero fork. The old RSX wheel set was also upgraded to Mavic Cosmic SL wheels. The finishing kit was upgraded to a Thompson stem and seat post. Physique Arioni saddle, carbon bottle cage, Bontrager bar with lizard skin bar tape. Mm. And what a that difference is, it's made I mean, too. It's really tidy, isn't it? It's really smart. And I love the attention to detail on just sort of all the little bits. And it's just a classic, classic example that of just showing you how, you know, you can turn something that already was quite a nice bike, just, you know, no special bits on it, a little bit tired, and something that looks really, really cool. Yeah, I do love a standard top tube, you know, completely traditional and flat. I like the way you've kept your quick release lever on your seat post. Yeah, and also Cannondale, I've kind of, seen as you've upcycled your Cannondale, they've gone back to that kind of logo now as well this year, which is pretty awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah, you see it on the new EF Education First bikes. Nice. Um, but he's up against Jonathan, who's from Gloucestershire. That's if you say it with an American accent, but it's in, in England. And Jonathan had always wanted to build his own frame, but he didn't have welding or brazing skills um, and he did have a background in woodwork, so he thought a bamboo gravel bike would be a great project. Well, but, why not? I know, awesome, right? Um, so he built a bamboo bike, but unfortunately his wife, who I'm sure is lovely and didn't act maliciously when she did this, left the bike next to a radiator when she was making room for a visit from the mother-in-law. Now this unfortunate series of events resulted in a loud bang in the middle of the night and a huge crack in the top tube as the bamboo had, had dried out. Oh. Crumbs. Now, in what could be described as the greatest comeback since Mighty Ducks 2, John set about building another bamboo bike and this one was gonna be even better than the one he built first time round. The second bike that John built used a composite construction combining bamboo tubes with carbon fibre lugs, resulting in it halving the frame weight of the original. Nice. Yeah, he completed it in time for Christmas, just gone, and took it on a charity gravel ride in January. Awesome work. I mean, I'm just completely blown away. Very impressive indeed. I wouldn't know where to start in terms of trying to build a bike out of bamboo, but... It looks like a real good life. Yeah, it looks awesome, doesn't it? A nice good picture of it as well. That's a terrible pun, wasn't it, Ollie? Yeah, it was it. <laughs> it's a really cool looking bike, I actually really like that. Yeah. I never knew that a hazard of owning a bamboo bike was that your top tube could crack if you left an air radiator. I know, I feel like I've learned something. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's brilliant. Well, uh, it's not down to us, let us know. You vote up here. Over there somewhere. Yeah. And uh, We'll find out next week, won't we? On. Yeah, you decide. 
bike of the week now. And last week, it was the Cervelo S5 of Sunweb, and that was up against the BMC Time Machine from Dimension Data. And walking home with the victory, a whopping 69% of the vote, it was the BMC. Comprehensive victory there. Yeah, I wonder if Cavendish will get as many easy victories like that this year. Yeah, well, it'd be nice. I'd like to see him come back. And I would as well, to be honest. Yeah, pretty right, cool. What have we got this week? Right, this week, well, we had to include some of the awesome new pro bikes that John's been seeing down under. Uh, so we've got Peter Sergan's aluminium alley sprint Whoa. that we mentioned earlier in the show. And we're going to put that up against the Cannondale System 6 of EF Education First. Ooh, interesting, interesting. Yeah, what do you reckon? I don't know, but I know where to vote and it's gonna be up there in that corner. Yeah, I quite like the, the sort of new old Cannondale logo on the Cannondale. That's yeah, cool. well they're quite different bikes. Yeah. Let us know. Time now for my favorite event of the week. It's the Bike Vault, but where is the bell? It's uh, just, just there. Oh yeah, sorry Ollie. Yeah! It's your turn this week, actually. Uh, no, it's okay. You can, you can. First up this week, we've got Ryan, who's from uh, Western Australia, Perth, and he took a picture of his BMC uh, time, team machine SLR01 outside this blue boathouse, which is apparently a very popular spot for people taking photos. And uh, he was unable to do it on several occasions due to thronging queues, Ooh. but managed to uh, avoid them and take the photo one evening. Check that out. What, what do you rake of that? Well, I can see why there's a queue to take that picture because that's stunning. It's a great isn't spot, it? isn't it? Yeah. That is an awesome picture. One of the best I've seen, actually, for a location. Yeah. Um, Awesome bike as well, I mean, full yeah. Dior Ace, very bling. Um, and quite brave, because I can imagine you wouldn't have had to make too much of a mistake for that to fall in the sea. Yeah, I don't think it was a very windy day looking at uh, the waves, so I think that, right. was, that was sensible. But um, yeah, Envy, Envy wheels on there, very smart, full Dior Ace, Di2. I mean, oh no, it's a mechanical Dior Ace, but still awesome. Envy stem matching the wheels, oh, I mean, He's Ollie. left his light on, but... Why, yeah, why not? Safety first. Well, he's going on an evening ride. He said it in the description. Nah, lights first. Yeah. Ollie, I love a bike with a flat top tube. It's a super nice for me. It's a super nice for me. Is that enough, do you think? Yeah. Cool. Right then, next up, an Obeya Orca Mio Golf from Tristan. In Yorkshire, yeah. oh, well. inspired by the 1960s Golf GT40s. Oh, they were they were cool. Mm. Made by Ford, but Golf was a livery. Yeah. Well, what do you reckon? Well, I mean, well, Orbea do awesome custom paint jobs, don't they? They do. Like, you've got one. But I mean, that I'm a big fan. I like cars. And yep. I'm a big fan of the Golf GT40 uh, livery, so that's good. And <laughs> if that wasn't enough, I mean, it's got a gold chain on it. Yeah. I love it. It's it like looks John really cool. Even, oh, sorry. I didn't even see us. I, I was just staring at the bike. I really like that. I think it's a really cool bike. Yeah, nice. All I can Tegra imagine it's a lot there. of fun to ride. He's also, he's ticked the boxes there. I mean, there's no, he's taking his saddle back off. He's taking his bottles off. He's put his, his crank in the correct position. I mean, he's not quite got it in the in the little ring, but that does show off the gold chain well, so I'll, I'll, I'll forgive him. It's a functional gear. Yes, it is. It's honest, it is, It's an honest gear. I think um, also I like the way he's cut his, the top of his, he's got no excess steerer on there as well. He's cut the top off. Right. It looks good. It looks like you probably have a lot of fun riding I it. mean, that's the easy one for me. That's just, That's a super nice. John doesn't normally do it that long, but okay. okay. John's not here, Ollie. Okay. Next, we have Joe, who has uh, a Bianchi Ultra uh, with Ultegra on it, and it's in Pine Lake, California. And um, check that out. That's a beautiful location, Ooh. that, isn't it? Yeah. I want to go there. Have you been there? I've not been there, no. I, I really want to go there. What do you think of the bike? Well, I like the shape of it. I like the geometry of it. I love how low your bars are. Deep drop bars as well, a, a which you long, don't see often. A long stem, aero yeah. bars. Yeah, negative stem. Um, Looks like you're going on a long ride too. You've got big bottles, big power, bidons. Power tap pedals. I'm, I'm not too sure about the, the mismatched bottles though. That's, a, mm. it's just grating on me slightly. 
You you didn't ask for the belt this week. I mean, I think it's. I mean, it's. Maybe it's, it's his team colours, Ollie. Maybe his team colours or his club colours match the bottles perfectly. I mean, I think it's it's really nice. <sighs> oh, Ollie, doesn't it have to be unanimous. No, I have to agree. Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah. what I mean. Yeah. Right then, we better nice. move on. Nice. To Dennis's R three Ultegra six eight thousand. Or 6,800 rather. Mm. Giant SLR, zero aero wheels, rotor in power in Maui. The road to Lahina, looking back towards Kihei. It's a beautiful location, but looking at the large number of uh, water bottles festooned to the bike, I'm, I'm guessing that Joe preceded the ride with a swim and followed it with a... Well, it is the home of a, the a Ironman, yeah. effectively. And he was on his way up a volcano. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's a, <laughs> it's nice, but I mean, what? Do I, it, the, the, it's the, a cycling version of a camel, isn't it? There's a lot of the the I just the bottles on there. I just I... you've got a thing about water carrying devices, haven't you? <laughs> I do, yeah. The last bike, I, this bike. I mean, uh, to his credit, they are matching bottles, and he has given a good excuse as to why he, he has his bottles on there. He is going up a volcano. What, what do you reckon, OP? Next up, that's so a nice, nice from so us. Nice, very nice bike. Um, next up, we've got uh, Ferruz with his Cannondale Cad 8 in Another Kuala Lumpur. Another bike, Ollie. Yes. Now, I think that is a really nice bike. It may not be as bling as, you know, some of the, we get some exceptionally bling bikes in the bike pool, don't we? But it's not always about absolute blingness. That is a very nice bike. Um, you know, and you can clearly see that that's someone's pride and joy, and they take very good care of it. It's got you know a lot of details in there. I, I, one slight criticism, though, the drivetrain could be a little bit cleaner. I think there's, you can see some some dirt on the sprockets there, but um, and also there does appear to be a bit of uh, steerer tube above the above the stem as well. What are you saying, Ollie? Well. I think that's a. I think it's a very, a very nice bike. But we, you know, if we're going to be letting things into the bike vault, and we expect people to, to, you know, make oh, the effort. Goodness. It's I tough, feel, isn't it, man? It is tough. I feel, I feel bad, Ollie. It's a, it's a lovely bike. I do love the Caddy. Actually, no, I don't feel bad because I gave the bike super nice. As it was you that chose not to. Okay. Well, that's a nice from me. But thanks very much for your submission. It's a great bike. Right. I think that's well, that is it. It's time to close those, isn't yes. it? Hang the right. bell back on the wall. Oh, Ollie, it's the end of the show. I know. Shame. But make sure you keep it locked in on the tech channel because we've got loads of cool stuff. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Saturday, Elia Viviani's bike from the Tour Down Under. Sunday is Fast Bike Geometry, which has Sai testing out different geometries on different bikes and explaining why one's faster than the other. Yeah, we've got your pro tips. Hacks is that on, on Monday? Yeah, Monday. Yeah, that'll be cool. And also, we've got an, um, an exciting giveaway and unboxing of the new S ASOS S9 bib shorts coming out as well. Nice. So it'll be a chance to win. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. And if you want a guide to all of 2019's World Tour bikes, why not? Check out that video down there. Yeah, and if you want a bargain, well, we've got up to 40% off in the GCN shop at the moment, so you've got a new yeah, shop, didn't you? Yes, yeah, size large now, Ollie. I've, I've grown. So I'll get you a fitness tracker and sort that out. <laughs>